This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening. Thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. We'll check in with Jay a little later in tonight's show. After less than 24 hours, President Trump has come and gone from the Magic City. As the city started to wake this morning, the president headed east to North and South Dakota to make his mark at rallies for other Republican candidates. But first, he took some time to talk with Q2. Now, before Trump boarded Air Force One this morning, he talked Montana issues with Q2 News Director John Stepanek. In this MTN exclusive, the president responds to questions on agriculture, a divided America, and the new book, Fear, by Bob Woodward. They're a little bit nervous, but they have confidence in me. They have trust in me. We're opening up barriers. You see what I'm doing with Canada as an example. Canada has not treated us well. And uh, big barriers, uh, they pay, uh, you know, if there's a 300 percent, think of it, 300 percent tariff if you sell dairy products into Canada. We're saying we're not playing this game anymore. They have a tremendous, you know, if we look at our surplus with Canada, it's not a surplus. It's a huge deficit. So we're changing and we're being tough and uh, let them be tough. But we're making, we're opening up countries. We're opening up the EU. That's Europe. We're opening up, uh, probably we're going to be opening up China. We're in a big, big fight with China. What I love about the folks in Montana, and they are important to you, uh, but what I like about the folks in Montana, they know it's not right what's been happening for many years. The level of hatred, the level of animosity, it's hard to believe. So if I was going to say there's any one problem in this country, it is definitely that you have two sides and there's great division. And there shouldn't be that division. But it seems no matter what you do, no matter how good, look, wages are going up, such a big thing. Numbers are great. The stock market's at an all-time high. There's more people working in the United States today than ever before. Think of that. Ever before. We have more people working. African-American employment, you know, as you know, is, is doing great. Uh, Asian employment, Hispanic employment, women's employment, every single, every single stat is fantastic. The only thing, you hit it, the only thing that troubles me is when you see an economy doing so well, a country doing so well, and yet there's this level of division and hatred, and that's a shame, and maybe we can do something about it. I hope so. I'm quoted as a fool, because if you look at the way, I don't speak that way. I'm highly educated. I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I, I don't speak that way. They're giving quotes. Now, if these quotes even exist, I don't know. Uh, do they make them up or what? They say they got them from a lot of people. Now, General Mattis, who's highly respected, said he never said that, and he gave the most beautiful uh, renunciation of the book. General Kelly, the same thing. He said, I never said that, and he gave, and if you look, many of my cabinet people, many of the people that were quoted said they never said that. They never said that. And I actually said in the tweet this morning, I said, look, if I spoke that way, I'd never be president. Out of the president's speech last night came an unlikely star now being referred to all over the Internet as plaid shirt guy. His visual facial expressions and reactions to Trump's speech are going so viral, even celebrities are tweeting about him today. But he's actually Tyler Linfesti, a senior at Billings West High, who was chosen to sit in the VIP section of the rally right behind the president. However, during the course of the speech, Tyler is caught on camera responding to the president's words. Some images catch the teen surprised or humored. At one point, he mouths, have you, after the president talks about picking up support. Now, Lynn Festi's time in the spotlight, though, got cut short when he was asked to leave and was replaced with this woman to stand in his coveted place. It will be next week before we know just how much President Trump's visit to Billings will cost the city. But in the meantime, police say everything went off without a hitch. Way to go, Billings. That's what Police Chief Rich St. John had to say about the cooperation and coordination between the public and his agency. In all, more than 100 Billings police officers were on hand to help navigate the president's motorcade through the city, as well as patrol closed roads overnight. Everybody was very polite. Everybody was very understanding. And uh, for those of us that were tasked with providing security, that is very, very much appreciated. 
Now, the chief is still trying to secure reimbursement for when Vice President Mike Pence visited Billings in July. That visit cost local taxpayers $20,000 in officer overtime. St. John anticipates this cost to be even more significant because Trump spent roughly 20 hours in our city. For nearly three decades, the Billings Parade of Homes has shown a spotlight on the best home builders in Billings. For Melissa Utley, co-owner of Granite Peak Builders, it's a chance to showcase what her company can do. But this week, the road to this latest parade became decidedly bumpier. Connor Pregitzer shows us why. There's quite a few builders that participate, and, um, and people look forward to it. There's a lot of really neat things that, that builders do in this town. It's fun to see. Well, we are out here on the west end of town, 66th and Grand, so that's the very west end of town, the site of this beautiful home, which is part of the Billings Parade of Homes. And with only six days left until that event, the builders of this home had a pretty major setback. The house that we are building um, got broke into Wednesday night and damaged some doors, took uh, most of our tools and our dump trailer. and. Uh, you can see where they used the crowbar to try and get through. We had a board across the back of it screwed in on both sides, so they couldn't just crowbar it open. Um, you can see there's several spots where they were trying to get a wedge in. It was just like a big punch in the gut, you know. We, you kind of get taken aback a little bit, and um, and then once you realize what happened, and you regroup and move forward. Despite the setback, including the theft of their dump trailer, Melissa believes that they will be finished with their home to meet all their deadlines. Melissa wants to thank the community for all their support in getting them back on their feet and back on track in this project. And she wants to urge others to be vigilant and do everything they can to secure their belongings. For MTN News, this is Connor Pregitzer. Thanks, Connor. O'Connor says that Granite Peak estimates its losses at around $25,000, but the builders tell us they are thankful more damage was not done to the interior of the home. Well, if you are planning some of your own construction, remodeling, or home updates, this is the perfect weekend to do some planning. The Fall Home Improvement Show has helped homeowners find contractors and come up with ideas for 25 years. The Fall Show features more than 400 exhibitors to the Metro Park Pavilion. More than 20,000 attended last year. It's touted as the largest show in the region. Now, the show is an opportunity for vendors and homeowners. It has such a time saver because, again, if you have 450 exhibits under one roof, it would take you months to find the people that we have out here. It's just, uh, it's just such, such a time saver in being able to come out here. We always do it the weekend after Labor Day because kids are back in school, families are done with their vacation, so they're back to the regular routine. And the Fall Home Improvement Show finishes at 8 o'clock tonight, but it runs again Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Coming up on tonight's 530 News, it's time to hit the links and maybe waddle a little at this year's golf tournament for the Boys and Girls Club. And later in sports, it's the weekend, and that means one thing. Football kicks into full gear. Dan Dragon's in to break it all down in just a few minutes. And coming up in weather, it's back. What are we talking about? The smoky skies again. Take a look at that. We're going to tell you where this stuff came from this time and what your weekend forecast has in store for you. All coming up in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.